Think Progress has a great article about a scam artist and a snake oil salesman in the field of health and medicine. They say, quote, A popular Australian wellness blogger who rose to fame after claiming she overcame several different types of cancer with a healthy lifestyle alone is now acknowledging that her career is built on a false premise and she never had cancer in the first place. Wow. I mean, that's like a really bold lie. Bell Gibson's holistic living brand centers on her dramatic story about how she tackled her personal medical history. Gibson claimed that after being diagnosed with terminal brain cancer in 2009 and given just a few weeks to live, she withdrew from chemotherapy and beat the cancer with help of healing foods. She told reporters that she believed her health issues, which she said also included subsequent diagnoses for cancers of the liver, uterus, spleen, and blood, stemmed from a bad reaction she had to Gardasil, the vaccine that protects against cervical cancer. All right, let's pause here. Think about all of the terrible messages she's sending. Basically, what she's saying in a roundabout way is, hey, nobody get the, the vaccine that protects against cervical cancer, and hey, if you're on chemotherapy, if you have cancer, and um, you think chemotherapy is the way to go, think again, I got off of chemo, and I started eating healthy, and I beat my cancer that way. If even one person listened to her, this is a criminal. This is a criminal. And chances are, way more than one person listened and took her advice. They say, quote, Gibson amassed somewhat of a social media empire. Over the past several years, she had gained hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram, designed a popular recipe app that was selected to be one of the first few apps featured on the Apple Watch, and landed several book deals. The December 2014th issue of Ellie... Australia dubbed Gibson the most inspiring woman you've met this year. Her cookbook, Whole Pantry, was set to be released in the U.S. and the U.K. this month. But when an Australian newspaper started calling Gibson's medical history into question, her story quickly unraveled. First, she claimed she had been misdiagnosed with liver, uterus, spleen, and blood cancers, but maintained that she definitely had terminal brain cancer at one point. Then... She suggested her brain cancer diagnosis was perhaps a medical error. Eventually, she admitted that none of it was true and said her troubled childhood may have led her to lie about her condition. Okay. Here's the main takeaway, because there are a lot of liberals who like this person here. Don't ever believe the people who start talking about alternative medicines or natural approaches because here's the deal man if you actually went through the rigorous testing and study process you wouldn't need to call your medicine alternative you could drop the word alternative and just call it medicine so anything that has that title alternative medicine or natural healing or wellness it's bullshit now, again, this is something that I know as a progressive and being in progressive circles, I know that sometimes progressives get angry when you say stuff like that because to them, they hate pharmaceutical companies so much that they think, well, this has to be the other option of natural ways to heal myself with herbs or whatever. And the reality is, while it is true that, uh, you know, the pharmaceutical companies are rapacious and they only care about profits and they've done many, many fucked up things, that doesn't then mean that you know, anything that's a natural remedy or an alternative so-called medicine works. No, oftentimes, there's actually more scam artists in the, the natural medicine field and in the alternative medicine field. So it's, you know, the idea is, well, God forbid we actually use something that comes from this big pharmaceutical company, GlaxoSmithKline or whatever, um... But I went to this other natural foods company, and they said that this has antioxidant effects and it gets rid of, cleanses my body of toxins, so I'm going to spend a lot of money to buy that stuff. No, but that company's scamming you. That company is playing off of your fear of how bad pharmaceutical companies are. Again, not to say that pharmaceutical companies are good. They're, of course, they're capitalists. All they care about is their profit, and they're going to try to make money by any means necessary. But understand that there is more real science behind many of the things 
that pharmaceutical companies sell or, and are involved with compared to so-called alternative medicine. Again, this is the first show that's always on top of, you know, when a pharmaceutical company does something fucked up and, you know, they're trying to get approval by the FDA for something they shouldn't get approval for and it's a bad drug that hurts people and kills people. We're on top of that more than anybody else. I'd put our record up against anybody else. But the fact of the matter is, does that also mean that everything a pharmaceutical company does, it does is always wrong? Well, no, they're the people who make the antibiotics that have probably saved your life three or four times and you don't even realize it. They're the people that have to make... The, the morphine that, you know, you got when you got in a car accident and you snapped your arm into. That worked, right? You know, they're the people who uh, come up with all these different kinds of, albeit very expensive and for-profit drugs that you need when you get sick. But I'll be damned, many of them work. So you can look at the situation and be objective and, and say the following thing. Pharmaceutical companies are often fucked up and they do the wrong thing. But sometimes they're right, and they provide, you know, life-saving uh, medicine. Whereas alternative uh, medicine and natural treatments, there's zero empirical evidence for it. Zero. So this is, I'm pleading to liberals, if you can't tell right now, and I hope I have, you know, uh, more effect because I'm part of progressive circles than some other asshole who might not be, who might be trying to make this case to you. But seriously, it's something that you need to remember. Homeopathy, total bullshit. Herbalism, total, absolute bullshit. Acupuncture, bullshit. Chiropractic, bullshit. I've told a story about my father on this show before. He had back pain, pretty bad back pain for a while. Kept going to his chiropractor. Chiropractor never told him, hey man, this is an issue. You might want to go to an actual doctor. He just kept cracking his back. This guy, that's all chiropractors are. Glorified back crackers, that's it. And they operate off of this theory called... Uh, vertebral subluxation or something like that. And it sounds, oh, it sounds official, right? Nonsense. It's the theory that all your ailments you've ever had in your life is because your spine isn't straight. That's, that's the idea. You have a virus or a disease, your spine's not straight. So, this guy basically swindled my dad into not going to a doctor and he just kept cracking his back. You know what that pain was in my dad's back? A tumor. He had lung cancer from smoking. It moved all the way to his back. It, you know, metastasized. And he ended up dying like a month later. He died at the age of 56 from cancer. Not taking away his own responsibility for smoking. I mean, that's obviously the cause of why he got cancer. But the fact that you went to somebody who was supposed to be a doctor, but they're not doctors because it's alternative medicine. It's not real medicine. So what did they do? They didn't do the right thing and say, you should go to a real doctor because this pain sounds worse than, you know, just a, a backache. He didn't do it. She kept taking his money, kept cracking his back. My dad's cancer got worse and worse the entire time. They're bullshit. Energy medicine, that's also bullshit. When you go to uh, the vitamin shop, a lot of people don't know this. The overwhelming majority of the stuff in the vitamin shop, zero evidence to back up the claims that they make. Whether it's St. John's wort treating depression or glucosamine and chondroitin for your joints, no evidence that backs it up that, you know, it helps with condition X. There's a few things in there that happen to have science backing it up, but it's likely an accident. And also, remember, a lot of the shit that it says on the label, too, is not actually in the bottle. We covered that story, where the FDA, they don't have authority to do this, because supplements have an exception, thank you, Congress, from regulation. But it, when you study what's actually in those capsules that you often get, it's like rice powder or soy powder, it's not actually the vitamins it says it is, it's not actually the thing it says on the label. So it's two layers of bullshit. Number one, even if it was the shit it said on the label, most of the time there's no evidence to back up the claims that they make. And number two, it's not even the shit it says on the label. So again, in conclusion here, the alternative medicine people are even bigger swindlers than the Western medicine people and the for-profit ev evil pharmaceutical companies. I know a lot of liberals don't like hearing that, but it's the harsh truth.